Welcome back, Marvels. Dana and I are here for another episode. Hi, Dana. How you doing, Gwen? I feel like I want to sing uh, Christmas time is here. If people oh, yes. don't understand that reference, it's the oh, I love Charlie Brown quality. Christmas album. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's probably one of the most iconic. Totally. Yeah. You know, albums. I, it's definitely on rotation at our house. My. Um, my husband collects vinyl and we have that on uh, vinyl. And yeah. so what's really lovely about vinyl is you really listen to something the way it was meant to be listened to beginning to end. There's no skipping with the, around. With the crackles and, oh There's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, yeah. you just, it's an just experience. Let it go. From, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whether it's a Vince Guaraldi or a Mariah Carey, it, it, you know, you it's go. all, nice. it's all a hodgepodge in our house, but, um, nice, nice. but you know, and, and, uh, Dana and I both celebrate Christmas and we know that not everybody does, but yep. something that has come up um, for us is the conversation about gift giving and uh, mm -hmm. gift receiving and the expectations that come around yeah, this it, time it, of the year. There's all kinds of holidays that are around this time of year that have gift giving in some form. So it seems yeah. to kind of fit. Yeah. 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 And so we're, we're not trying to just talk about Christmas. It's just, yeah. it's our own personal kind right, of right, um, right. experiences. But mm -hmm. I find, I will say, so my clients, um, Christmas time, Hanukkah, and you know, these, these where there's gifts that are kind of re given and, ex and received mm -hmm. um, is actually a very challenging time of yeah. the year. It's, it's kind yeah. of not all um well because it's not just so, yeah you we were talking before i we went on started taping about especially when you're a kid there's so much about expectations and you know what you wish for as a kid and you know the whole the whole um uh christmas story movie where ralph wants to get the red rider gun you know is, is it's that works so well we can all really identify with this kid who wants this thing and his mom says no, and you know the dad just sort of doesn't really say anything. But this idea of the quest of a child to get what they want, and we understand there's limits to that, monetary limits, and you can't always get a kid exactly what they want, and the whole spoiled thing and all that. But it really is a time that's ripe for being heard, right? So if a kid says, or you were talking before the, we started taping too, like the parents not even asking the child what they want or asking them for a list, how do you know what they want? I mean, how, how would you even know that? And so there's this sort of expectation and then this learned disappointment, right? Where you never quite get what you want or you don't get what you want. And then it's more than just a gift though. I mean, if we talk about it from a psychological place, it's about not being seen it's about not feeling like you're worthy enough. Um, I had a lot of that growing up where we, you know, I knew I'm not going to get everything I want. We'd get this big, we get the Sears wish book to date myself and we could earmark pages that we, stuff that we wanted. Now I would earmark a ton of stuff knowing I wasn't going to get everything. Um, or they, my parents would get me something, but they'd get a, like a cheaper knockoff of it. And that was always hard because the ki other kids would be like, oh, it's not the right one, which again, is a parental issue. There's not endless money. I totally get it. But it's this idea of you don't see me. Um, I am 59 years old. My dad is in his 80s. And he again sends me an email last week and says, we have a, a, a thing in our family. We'd always get, we'd order from Swiss Colony every year that has like cheeses and crackers and sausages and stuff. And he says, oh, I'm going to send you some sausages from Swiss Colony. A, he knows by now that I don't eat meat. I've told him 8,000 times. Um, never mind the no gluten thing. That seems to never be able to stick. But I've never liked sausage my entire life, even as a kid. Like when he would make uh, hot dogs, or th I would eat a hot dog, but not like a um, uh, bratwurst because they were too sausage like. I've never liked sausage, ever. And it can, it's sort of this feeling of just went to this place of there it is again. I'm not important enough to him for him to even care to learn that about me versus my sister who was with me in Montana one year at this place we go to, to get this awesome candy. She pointed to one kind of candy that was in there and said, I love those. You can't find them anywhere. 
So I sent her a bunch for Christmas. She's like, how did you know? I'm like, you told me once, seven years ago. And granted, you don't always remember that. But I just wrote back to my, I was just like hurt and mad and again, not being seen. And all I wrote back, I was like, I just wrote back and I said, um, I don't eat meat, but my wife will like it. That's all I wrote. And then he did write back and he wrote, oh yeah, that's right. You don't need meat. Okay, so I'll send you some toffee. Will that work? And I said, well, long as it's gluten-free. <laughs> but it's just like, we've been out to dinner together where he knows I'm gluten-free and I order from a gluten-free menu and then he doesn't and he's eating something and he says, do you wanna try mine? And I'm like, Jesus Christ. So <laughs> that's the bigger issue, I think, when yeah. you're, as a kid, yeah. you're not feeling like you're being seen yeah. And if, you know, your parents can't get something for whatever reason, there's ways to deal with that. So that expectations piece, and then just the sensory overwhelm for those of you that celebrate Christmas, if it's Christmas morning, if it's Christmas Eve, yeah. the pandemonium, different foods, different smells. Uh, my family, we used to open up one present at a time. And it was frustrating for me as a kid because I learned patience that way. But as we were talking before we taped again, I was like, oh, that was much lower sensory. And I'm pretty sure my mom was autistic in hindsight. Maybe she's the one that instigated that. Because yeah. I've been in families where everything gets opened at once and it is pandemonium. And I'm like, yeah. get me out of here. <laughs> so there's a lot to this gift giving and expectations and disappointment and all that. Well, and the yeah. social expectations are really – there's a lot of them throughout the season mm -hmm. because there's a lot of like usually like family gatherings and then like – oh, another thing, pictures, oh, taking yeah. pictures around this yeah. time, <laughs> taking pictures for a Christmas <laughs> card or a holiday card, you know, like all of these things and and yeah. that, you know – my clients inevitably understand, especially, you know, uh, most of my clients now are, you know, late teens, adults, and mm -hmm. they understand that um, their parents expect mm. this certain behavior um, around uh. the holidays that I can't complain um, if I do, you know. Um, they just have to suck it up. Is that... I'm ungrateful, yeah. oh. right? But oh. it's, you know, unfortunately, yeah. it's like Christmas Eve at this person's house, but then Christmas Day at this person's house. And mm -hmm. then it's like, did it, right? It's like, there's a lot of social things. So they kind of get drained. But yeah. I will say the Christmas morning situation has resulted in numerous police calls. And I'm not exaggerating mm -hmm. um, here because there's just so much dysregulation, not only on this day, but leading up to this day. Mm -hmm. um, and that... The, what I, what I've said before is, um, do what might be effective, not what you feel is right. Like yeah, in your, in your mind, it's like, okay, well, it's right for X, Y, and Z to happen in this way, but that's mm -hmm. not necessarily going to be an effective or, right. um, pleasurable holiday celebration for everybody. Right. And it's not about being ungrateful. You yeah. know, like my clients are very specific about what they like, you know, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, I got a lot of that. You're ungrateful. Yeah, yeah. You're that, that's like that. That's like the key, you know? So during mm -hmm, the season, mm -hmm. it's like ungrateful is, it replaces like lazy and unmotivated <laughs> as, as the, <laughs> as the moral, as the moral diagnoses. But you know, this yeah. idea that, you know, uh, I was, I was trying to encourage a family that I, I work with and I was trying to encourage them to have a list. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Just have a list because mm -hmm. the not knowing what they're going to get and then being disappointed, the, mm -hmm. the build up, the anticipation, the having to keep it together and then being let down. It's yeah. not like the, the message of gratitude is gone. Yeah. The, my clients are very, are grateful, especially when they're like, Oh, I can, I have room for this. I have room to be grateful mm. for this, this, you know, cause it's specific, right? It's not yeah. that I yeah. want, it's not that I want, you know, the, the Star Wars DVD set. I want the Star Wars DVD set pre this with yeah. these, this yeah. thing yeah. They're very specific. made by yeah. this, with this cover. It's a very, mm -hmm. it's like, it's mm -hmm. very difficult to land some yeah. of those yeah. things. Yeah. Um, My wife and I just send each other the link to the thing yeah. to make it as easy as possible. And yeah, yeah. there's some of the surprises out of it, but it works really well. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm not saying like, you know, you get like for some people, they, they like the surprise uh, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. fine. But, 
you know, it's it's okay, you know, it, it's it's okay to have the yeah. list. Um because then then you can make room for the dialogue of gratitude and yeah. it's a calm, relaxing time versus yeah. a fight. And I'm not I, like I'm not kidding people's screen doors have been broken, windows well, have been broken, God. police have been called. I mean, it's it, it, it doesn't have to go down like that no, on Christmas no. morning or, no. or whatever. <laughs> On, you know, whatever, on whatever day it is, it's just like maybe rethink it. Yeah, because birthdays and, could be the same way, I would imagine, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, the okay. singing, the birthday, yeah. the happy birthday singing, the can <sighs> like many of my clients don't want to be on the other side of, of happy. Yeah, They're I, just like, I don't even know what table. to do. Right. Yeah. I yeah. don't know what to do when everyone's singing. I don't want all that attention on me. I don't I don't yeah. want it. I, you know. Yeah. So again, it's it's like, what are the preferences? But man, holiday times are really stressful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So much routine I, disruption. We kind of talked about that last year, but the, yeah. focusing in on this idea of expectations. And I think yeah. as a kid and even as an adult, to a certain extent, the, the bar is so high when we're looking at these commercials and movies and how it's supposed to be this magic. And I don't know about you, but I've never had a holiday like that because it's not achievable, right? Yeah. Like it is on TV. I mean, I've had moments of of that. The closest I've probably gotten to it was being at Disney World around Christmas time because you're surrounded by all this stuff that's curated and mm -hmm. it's just magical, right? Mm -hmm. That's not real life. It doesn't really kind of work like that. And so to um, be mindful of somebody who has sensory issues or is going to go to that place of hurt or agitation or aggression or whatever that is, is more apt to at other times of the year, <clears throat> why would you think it wouldn't be the same this time of year? In fact, it would be worse and amped up, right? Yeah. Yeah, be because it's it's cumulative. Mm -hmm. There's a cumulative mm -hmm. kind of effect, I feel like. Um, yeah. So, you know, the other thing that I see too is that many of my clients, they – they really enjoy the anticipation and the planning, but not necessarily mm. the moment. Yeah. Um, so yeah. that's another thing. And then and then parents get hurt because there's not a huge wave of excitement. Oh, I always yeah, I always wonder like how yeah. Gift how do I respond when I literally open this up? And I'm sure it always sounded fake, like, oh, thank you. Because I just didn't the reaction was more internal, right? Yeah. Which was I was like, yeah. I remember getting the skateboard. It was the greatest thing ever. And then getting the you're ungrateful thing. And I'm like, no, I love this thing. What are you talking about? Well, you didn't seem very excited. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. So just expect that someone who's neurodivergent might give you a reaction that you don't expect. It doesn't mean they don't like it or they don't care. Yeah. Just like any other time of the year, they may just be dysregulated and they're not expressing or emoting in a way that you're expecting. Yeah. yeah. And, and sometimes this has to do more with um, the parental expectation or mm -hmm. their, you know, because no doubt they're working hard. It's a stressful mm -hmm. time. You know, mm -hmm. they, they're putting a lot of energy and effort into mm -hmm. these moments for their children. Like I, I like I get that too, as a, as a mm -hmm. parent. Mm -hmm. yeah, and sure. so um, just be careful about um, what you define as success. Yeah. Like yeah. be, be yeah. clear about it. Sometimes we're not yeah. clear about it as parents. Um, but sometimes we get caught up our, ex yeah. our own expectations and feelings get caught up in the yeah. moment too, yep. understandably, because you've probably worked really hard for that moment and right, a lot of money right. and time and, you know, thoughtfulness into it. So, yep. Yep, exactly. um, yeah, so it's just, how do we kind of smooth out the holiday season? So it's not so... Mm -hmm. It doesn't end up in a police call. I'm not kidding. Like, the, maybe yeah, that, that would be, be the worst case scenario, maybe, right? Maybe, maybe the title of this episode should be "How Christmas Doesn't End Up with the Police Coming to Your House." <laughs> I don't think YouTube will allow us that many letters. How to avoid the the yeah? How to avoid having the police call to your house? Yeah, during yeah, like, the holidays. Like, yeah. um, oh, no nine one one calls on Christmas. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know. Like, I mean, I don't. Unless know. someone's I, joking yeah. or having a heart attack, but otherwise, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's not do that. It's too literal. Too literal. Thank, thank you for lending that autistic brain of yours, Dana. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, and it, you know, it goes both ways, too, that if you're on the receiving end of this and you're listening to us and you are the neurodivergent person, I think it's a good skill and it's an important skill to realize that everything isn't, you know, 
going to be magical and you're going to be disappointed and everything's aren't going to be perfect and just expect that it's okay you know someone's not going to get you the perfect thing or you're you may get past the holiday gifts aside and just feel like what was that you know every year i I love there's a line in when harry met sally and it's uh he says oh every year i just try to make it from right before thanksgiving till after new year's and then sally sally just says yep a lot of suicides and just it's a joke right but it's sort of true like oh, that yeah. whole period has so much pressure and it's boom 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 holiday after another and it really is that sense of how the hell do i deal with all of this and am i feeling normal are they feeling normal what is going on and it's a huge disruption to everything and how can you feel normal when everything around you is different it's crazy yeah and then let's remember like these times also bring up some triggers of trauma in the sense yeah. that, you know, it's um, losses in your mm-hmm. life, big losses yeah, in your yeah, life. You yeah. know, these types of times bring up the memory of not yeah. having those people in your life. I mean, like it's this is not all like I said, you know, it, it, it it's not all it's not all, you know, cho- chocolate and yeah. and uh, yeah. sprinkles and, you know what I mean? It's it's just it's it's stressful. Right. I love the line in Babe the Pig. Do you, have you seen that movie? Oh, I love Babe. Yeah. Where there's a, there, I think it's the goose or whatever that's in that. It, it's, he's worried about getting cooked for Christmas dinner, but he, he goes through the string of things happening. And then his, the last line is Christmas is carnage. And I'm like, that's the best one liner ever. Christmas is carnage. The holidays are yeah. carnage. It, all these different ways that we're talking about. And you just want to survive yeah. through it and be okay. And just know that it's going to be. And if you're someone that loves someone who's neurodivergent, you know, help them along a little bit. We appreciate it. Yeah. And, and make it like, make it your own. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. have to yeah. be like everything, like you said, Dana, it doesn't have to be like what you see mm-hmm. on television mm-hmm. or what you mm-hmm. did when you were a kid, like yeah. make it your own. And, yeah. you know, as, as, as the neurodivergent person, um, maybe even get a sense of like what you need. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. have, we have two Christmas trees. One's a little one that's super easy to set up and take down. The other one's a full one because I have EDS and it seems like every two years I have to have some sort of surgery. And this year it's my thumb. And so we put up the little tree. And I, I even said that to my wife. I'm like, oh, I'm having surgery this year. Let's do the little tree. And she's like, oh, yeah, OK, because it's easier to take down. And yeah. it's just those things are great to be able to plan. And if the person's like, oh, I'm so bummed. I'm not going to have the big tree. Blah, blah, blah. It's not Christmas without big tree. Just tell them, OK. That's fine, but then you're responsible for it all. Yep. I won't I won't do it. You know, so there's ways to work that out with your family around a way that it, you can help for you as the adult to take care of yourself too. Yep. Take your own food to a party, say no to some parties, go hang out with the dog at a party, you know, whatever that drive is. Drive yourself. Don't don't drive yourself ride in the same leave. right. Don't yes. stay in the same car as your family. Mm-hmm. Like have an escape plan. Yeah, um, yeah. know that you can leave parties early. You don't have to stay mm-hmm. for the full time. Yeah, um, yeah. find out if there's someone that you really like that's going and yeah. you know, yeah. this is a yeah. terrible advice coming from a psychologist, but I find a gin and tonic really helps. <laughs> I like, this is the I only time see Dana. I can see why Newman's invented this 4,000 years ago. This makes everything a lot. Yeah. And obviously, if you have a, yeah. an addictions issue, don't listen to me. And I drink once a year. It's my Christmas G&T. And it helps a lot. So there you go. By the way, that's yeah. the only time Dana mo- like, m- like diverts from her Diet Coke, you know. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's the holidays. Like, oh, this is, this is a G&T night. This is a G&T night. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, is yeah. hilarious. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, listen, yeah. uh, we have gotten this feedback before from our audience that, you know, sometimes, I mean, Dana and I are both very light and, um, yeah. and have funny fun. and yeah. we, we find the humor in a lot of different things. So again, mm. we, d- we don't mean to be offensive to you. If right. This is, <laughs> That's why I said this is probably <laughs> ill advice coming from a psychologist. <laughs> But what sometimes whatever works. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, too funny. Yeah. I'm dying. Or you could just like be like, ooh, there's tiramisu here. I'm just gonna i I'm gonna, you know, yeah. there's there that could take yeah. the edge off a little bit, depending yeah. on how those lady fingers have been yeah. served. If you yeah, if you have issues with that, don't do it. But if you can and it yeah. works and it's temporary, 
go for it. Why not? Plant, you yeah. know, I think part of it, what do we always talk about? This kind of self-knowledge, self-awareness. What do you mm-hmm. need? Lean into that. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, cope ahead. That's another word yeah. that we use in psychology. You know, we, we, yeah. you cope ahead. You prepare. Mm-hmm. Um, that yeah. does mean, though, you need to know yourself. And you, that is yes. your responsibility. <laughs> that is your right. responsibility, not everyone else's responsibility. Right. right, right. Um, but it's okay. It's okay to do that and, and maybe even yeah. be more mindful of it during this time because the demands yeah. of the time are different than they are in other times right. of the year. Exactly. So um, with that note, I mean, I will say – Dana and I, um, I will, I'm super grateful that we, I get to meet with Dana on a regular basis and talk about fun things. And I know we're grateful for you as people in our community and our audience. And um, Mm -hmm. we wish you all the best this holiday season, no matter what you celebrate. Absolutely. Right back at you. Yeah. All right. Be good to you, everybody. We will see you in the next episode. Bye.